fabric. It comes in many textures, weights, weaves and colors. And it has so many different applications based on the types. So within this pile of choices, which one is the right one for your project? Today I'll be talking about many different fabrics and the focus will mostly be on costuming, although buying fabrics for costumes is not a whole lot different than buying fabrics for daily wear clothes. Whether it is LARP, cosplay or historical costuming, it is always handy to know what you're buying. So without further ado, let's get to the fabrics. Before we dive into the very specific fabric types, there are some more broad categories that I'd like to talk about. First of all, synthetic versus natural fabrics. I want to talk about this first because it is a discussion that you sometimes see online. Are all synthetic fabrics bad? Should you only use natural fabrics? And I'd say it depends, but that's broader than just these two categories. But what even is the difference between synthetic and natural fabric? The idea is pretty simple. Natural fabrics all have a basis in nature. It's either harvested from a plant, shorn from a sheep, spun by moths. It does not mean that no chemicals are involved. Especially in the dyeing process, there will be a lot of chemicals involved. Synthetic fabrics are all fully man-made from start to finish. They are made by combining different ingredients and spinning threads from the resulting substances. But that does mean that the resulting fabrics have some different applications. This can differ with the different types of fabrics, but in general, natural fabrics are more breathable. If you wear them, they will feel less sweaty and they feel better to the skin. Synthetic fabrics, on the other hand, can be really airtight. That can be a big pro in jackets and coats, for example, but that can also be a con when you want that breathability, when you want to be able to run and sweat in your costume. In that case, synthetic fabrics might not be your best option. There are also other considerations in the difference between synthetic and natural fabrics. Natural fabrics can be more expensive just because they're less easy to make. You have to grow, you have to wait for stuff to be made instead of just throwing ingredients together and you have your fabric. Another thing to take into consideration is that there are natural fabrics that are way less of a fire hazard than synthetic fabrics. So if you are making your costume for SCA, reenactment, LARP, cosplay, basically anything that's going to be near open fire, natural fabrics can be your best friend. Again, there are of course synthetic fabrics that are treated with fire retardant, but then you need to buy them specifically for that. And I don't know if that actually has the look that you're going for for your costume. While on the other hand, there are rules and everything that are pretty good against fire. This is also something that you can use to distinguish between synthetic and natural fibers. Another thing to take into consideration when buying your fabric is the amount of stretch in a fabric. For example, this linen has no stretch at all, whereas this jersey is quite stretchy. And then there are also fabrics that fall somewhere in between. The way that they are woven gives them some stretch, but not a whole lot. In general, if you're making very tight fitting clothing or relatively tight fitting clothing, but you still need a lot of movement, the more stretch you want your fabric to have. Unless the non-stretchiness of the fabric is a feature. For example, in corsets, they're very tight fitting, but you want them to be tight fitting and have no stretch. So for that, you will be using fabrics with no stretch. And as a side note, in general, stretch fabrics have been invented later. So if you're making a fully historical outfit, of course, depending on the time period, you might want to stay away from the stretch fabrics. But with these two broad categories out of the way, let's get into the fabric types themselves. Let's start with what is probably the most well-known fabric of them all, cotton. Cotton is made from a cotton plant, so it is a natural fabric, and it comes in so many different weaves, weights, and colors, as you can see. There are some things you need to keep in mind though when working with cotton. Because it doesn't stretch, if you have a garment that goes over your head, you either need to insert buttons or make sure that your neck hole is wide enough to get it over your head no problem. The other thing is that generally because of the weave of cotton, it frays a lot. So all the edges do need to be finished. One thing that I really like about working with cotton is the sturdiness of the fabric and just the variety of it. I mean, this is cotton two layers of cotton woven together, so it is very lightweight and airy. But you also have cotton like this, and the way that it is woven makes it slightly more rough. Very heavyweight, but also very sturdy. And aside from that, aside from costuming purposes, it comes in so many different prints. I made a blouse of this one, I made this blouse, it's all cotton. Cotton does wrinkle slightly, so you do need an iron nearby when you're working with it. But other than that, cotton is a great starter fabric. The next fabric I'd like to talk about is linen. 
In a way, linen is very similar to cotton. It is also made from a plant basis, this time from flax. The flax fibers are spun into threads and the thread is woven into what we know as linen. Linen is also a non-stretch fabric, so you need to take into consideration the same things out with cotton. It also frays quite similarly. The nice thing about linen is that it is very breathable, so it is very suited for warmer climates and summer clothing. In general, even better than cotton. Another difference is that linen creases very easily, even easier than cotton. But does it really matter? Especially if you're making clothing for SCA reenactment or LARP. Which traveler in the olden days had an iron at them at all times? So, authenticity, I suppose? When buying linen, the color selection will also generally be smaller than with cotton. Linen also doesn't come with these patterns. Then again, linen has its own look. Quite often it comes in these slightly more coarse weaves, but there are also finer weaves. Overall, I'd say linen falls into the same categories as cotton, and I would definitely recommend linen for beginner sewists. The next fabric type I'd like to talk about is wool. The most well-known wool types are types like these. This is boiled wool. It is very suited for making warm capes, cloaks. It is also very fire retardant, so if you have a costume that will be near fire, it is very handy to have woolen sleeves so they don't catch on fire and burn you. Generally, wool is not the cheapest fabric, but this is still the fabric that I'm probably most happy about that I bought it. Just a simple one and a half meter of wool, it has kept me warm during so many events. It paid back pretty well. This type of wool is the wool that most people think about when you talk about wool. But another really popular use of wool is suiting. Yes, the fabric used for fancy suits. Then you get a fabric that looks more like this. In this specific case, this is also where we're going to get into mixed fabrics. This is 45% wool and 55% polyester. It will therefore behave somewhere between synthetic fabrics and wool. Another bonus is, is that this is a lot cheaper than wool, but it still looks like pretty much fancy suiting. That is also another thing with synthetics and mixed fabrics. If it suits your project, just use it. In general, in the way that they handle, I can recommend both for beginners. This one doesn't even need it, I just finished. This one, it really does. The price of wool is generally slightly higher than cotton and linen, for example. So if you're really just starting out and looking for something to make your first mock-ups with, I can maybe not recommend this. But other than that, especially if you're starting with a cloak or a cape, just big pieces of fabric and only a few seams, I can definitely recommend this because you'll have so much use out of this. The next category I'd like to talk about is leather, both real and fake. And I'm curious, can you spot which ones of these are real leather and which ones are fake leather? Of course, when I'm talking about leather in the costuming clothing kind of sense, I'm talking about the supple thinner leather, not the rough armor leather. So these kinds of leathers. In general, leather is not the easiest material to work with. The two most obvious things are, you will see every hole you make in it. If you pin something together before sewing, there is a chance you will forever see those pinholes. The other thing is that because it is a rougher, less supple kind of fabric, everything needs to fit perfectly. Especially because most leathers are kind of shiny. It will reflect all the mistakes in the creases. An interesting category in this would be suede or the fake variant suedina. I think that's a Dutch word. Anyway, which is something that will look like this. This is an extra glittery and shiny one, but you can also get them in plain. The thing is with fake suedes, I think they're really good. And because it is slightly fluffy, it is actually really easy to work with. Because if you pin the fabric together, it won't slide as easily. And that's something that can make working with fabric a lot more difficult. Another nice thing in costume is it can give a costume a slightly bit more volume. It will stay more in place and it drapes really nicely. It's also quite nice and warm. So that was a bit of a tangent into suede. But to give the answer from the beginning, only these two are real leathers. This entire pile is fake. But in general, fake leathers are a bit of a hit and miss. I made pants out of these and although I love the look of it, it damages really easily. I also used these two fake leathers to, well, of course, make that coat. And I'm still really happy with it. Really depending on the project that you're going to make with it and the type of fake leather that you're going to get. As I said, leather might not be the easiest material to work with. If you want to make something that looks sleek and prim and proper and everything, you need to get special feet for your machine and it might not be the best project to start with. On the other hand, if you're making an Uruk and everything may look rough and ugly, Go ahead, take all the leather you want and experiment with it. This next fabric is one that is categorized more by the construction rather than the material that the fabric is made of. Because I'd like to talk about jersey. 
Jersey is a rather stretchy fabric, most often made with cotton, but also polyesters or blends of other fabrics. You will see jersey used most often in t-shirts and other modern day clothing that needs to go over your head but that you don't want to button in. So you can buy jersey with all sorts of funny prints. Yes, these are all jerseys that I've used to make t-shirts and other daily wear clothes. But you might be wondering, why am I talking about jersey in a costuming video? Well, there is more costuming than just historical stuff. Think about LARPs in the modern day. Where you want tight clothing, jersey is perfect. And jersey is awesome in cosplay. For example, I used this brown jersey to make the gloves for the Karanthir cosplay. Making gloves with jersey is super easy. Put it down on the table, put your hand on it, draw around it, sew that line and you basically got your glove. Aside from that, I've also used jersey in shoe covers. Because it is stretchy, you can stretch it, put it over it and it will snap into place and hold on tight. So it's great for stuff like that. Sewing wise, jersey is not the easiest, but also not too difficult. The fact that it's stretchy is also a downside. As you can see, the fabric will roll up at the edges, which can make it slightly difficult to sew because you need to keep unrolling the edges to actually sew it. The fact that it is stretchy means you need to sew it with a zigzag because if your stitches are straight and the fabric starts stretching, you will snap your stitches. So if you sew it with a zigzag, the stitch can stretch along with your fabric. And jersey is not the most expensive fabric either. I would recommend though, if you're buying jersey, to look at the weight of it. Because you got jersey like this, which still has some weight and volume to it. Or you have jersey like this, which is rather floppy and a bit thin. This will be more difficult to sew than the slightly sturdier jersey. Another modern stretchy fabric that I'd like to talk about is spandex and scuba. You might know these fabrics mostly from sportswear and beachwear. And indeed, that's what it's used for most often especially stuff like this. But these fabrics can be very useful for costumes as well, especially for modern or even futuristic costumes. So what even are these fabrics and why do I put them all in the same category? That is because all of these are made to be stretchy, not just in one direction, but in both directions and even more so than the jersey. You heard me say scuba and spandex. Those are two different fabrics. These three fabrics here are all spandex. Spandex is also called lycra, it can be used interchangeably. These are especially what is used for swimwear. Scuba might be most well known for diving suits. And indeed, that's what it started as. But right now you can also just buy it as fabric for, I think it was advertised for dresses and that sort of stuff. The difference is mostly that scuba is slightly thicker and will therefore also be a bit warmer. Scuba can be shaped more than lycra. I mean, you can already see the difference in how well it holds its shape. And then there's a third fabric here in the middle that I haven't talked about yet. I think it's also spandex. But why I have it on the table here is because this is a mesh, a very stretchy mesh, also in both ways. So the application of this is quite similar to the others. The reason why I want to talk about this in a costuming video is because these fabrics can be very useful for costuming. If you have a costume that shows slightly more skin than you'd like, you can wear a skin tone lycra underneath and no one will know that you are wearing more than you appear to be wearing. Other than that, well, for example, I use this as the top part of my cyberpunk corset. But again, if you're making clothing that is skin tight, lycra is a very good choice. It is more difficult to sew than jersey though, because especially the spandex, as you can see, it's very flowy. If you put two pieces of fabric on each other, it will slide very bad. So if you're sewing with this, use a lot of pins. And again, zigzag stitch all the way. The next fabric type that I do want to mention quickly is velvet. Velvet is a type of weave. So velvet can be made from many types of materials. I inherited these from my grandma, so I don't know what it is, but it is a very heavy, slightly more coarse on the backside velvet. So I think this is upholstery velvet. Generally, velvet is considered a luxurious, very expensive fabric. I mean, it's soft, nice shine, but it doesn't have to be expensive. I mean, this stuff is very cheap. Then again, you can see the difference in quality. This is a synthetic fabric and you can see in the way that it shines, it looks a lot more plasticky. In the way that it sews, it's very comparable to the jersey. It does roll up at the edges very much and it sews quite easily. I do want to mention velvet in a costuming video because this type of velvet in a slightly lighter weight can definitely be used for the most gorgeous gowns and absolutely be historically accurate as well. 
This type of velvet can also be used in costuming very well. Personally, I used it to make very short pants for a Seelie character. And I think for anything magical, you can definitely use it. In the past, this was used quite a lot in LARP. I mean, any fancy dress would be made from this stuff. I think nowadays people are less likely to use this, but still, I think it definitely has its uses. So I didn't want to mention it. And last but not least, a category that I call a random pile of assorted synthetics. Some of these I have absolutely no clue what they're made of, but they were still very useful fabrics. And that also comes down to something that I think is sometimes overlooked when people are talking about what fabric to buy for your project. You don't always need to know exactly what your fabric is made out of. For example, this mesh that does not stretch, but is very light, would work very well in combination with the light grass that I showed you earlier, when you do need something in your project that doesn't stretch. Fake fur, it's more important that it looks like the way you want to. So if you need something that looks slightly realistic, get slightly more realistic fake fur. Does it matter what it's made out of? Not really. And that goes for all of these fabrics. I mean, this has a weird black threads in the middle, but if I look at it, I can imagine this being a great coat as it has quite a bit of weight to it. And in the same category, this appears to be some sort of jersey, but backed with a nice fleece, so it will be nice and warm. The most important thing is that your fabric is going to suit your project. Did I mind that I was buying lots of synthetic polar fleece when I was a student? No, it was very cheap and all I wanted was a nice warm cloak. So did I care about breathability? No, not as much. I was happy with my nice cheap warm cloak and that's all that mattered. And I guess that also touched upon something else. It doesn't really matter what the fabric is marketed as, as long as it suits your project. All of this was marketed as curtain fabric. Yes, this was curtain fabric. It's also curtain fabric. And yes, this literally has curtain rings in it because this was a bargain bin curtain from Ikea. I used nearly all of it to make mock-ups because this is very sturdy fabric and great to make mock-ups that need to be sturdy like corsets and everything. But no matter what kind of fabric you're getting, and especially if you're just starting out and still getting used to what kind of fabric is what, go and buy your fabric in person. First of all, colors on the websites may not always match the colors in real life. And especially if you're trying to color match for stuff like cosplay, you do want to be able to color match in real life. Fabrics can also be more or less lightweight than you anticipate them to be on the store. And especially if you're buying fabric mixes with an X amount of synthetics in them, they might turn out to feel more synthetic in person than you think, or more or less shiny than you think, which again in cosplay can also be a big deal breaker because shininess is very hard to photograph. But I do realize not everyone is as lucky as me to have two fabric stores nearby. I mean, if you don't have any nearby, of course, just buy online. You can also Google and see if there are any fabric markets nearby, because at least here in the Netherlands, there are still plenty of fabric markets to go around. Once you bought your fabric and arrived home, the first thing that you should be doing is to chuck it in the washing machine, a tip that I don't always do either, but you should be doing. Again, if your fabric can be washed, that is. Don't do that for wools, absolutely do it for cottons and linens. Cottons, especially the cotton gauze that I showed you earlier, will shrink like mad. It can sometimes be the difference that your one and a half meter of fabric shrinks five centimeters. That's very important. You don't want that happening after your garment has finished. It was only the tip of the iceberg because within every fabric type, there are still plenty of subtypes. And there are some fabric types that I just can't really show you guys because I don't have them laying around here. Not in my four, five, sorry, six boxes of fabric. I absolutely did not show you guys only one third of the fabrics that I have. I have an excuse. I inherited most of it. I totally didn't buy most of it. Regardless, if you have any questions about any fabric that I showed you or which kind of fabric to buy for your project, do put it in the comments. I'd love to answer them. If you found this information useful, you can consider subscribing or even donating me a coffee on Ko-Fi. The link is in the description. And with that, thank you all for watching and see you guys next time.